Imagine you're living alone in a house in the midsummer July where the projected high is 110 and your mother calls asking if you'd like to go out to breakfast. You apologize as you've just made yourself bacon and eggs, but that's the last you remember of the morning. Hours later, when you wake up, you're under the kitchen table and you instantly know you need to get to your medicine in the fridge. Although no matter how hard you try, you can't quite make it and you keep falling. You pass out again. This time, when you wake up, you're in the hallway, even further away from the fridge. You manage to crawl to your room before passing out again, thinking you're alone and no one can help you. The next time you wake up, you manage to dial 911 and ask for help before passing out one final time. This story comes from my father, Rob Holmes, diagnosed in 1974 and having battled the disease for more than 40 years. Just five minutes later, the paramedics arrived and injected him with a life-saving injection of glucose. Today, we will discuss diabetes. First, we will discuss the history and mentions of diabetes in the ancient texts. Then, we will discuss the modern day statistics and facts surrounding the disease. And then, we will discuss the future for diabetes and treatment for diabetics. But before we can get to this bright future, we have to go back to the past. According to Leonid Portsky, the first mention of diabetes comes from an ancient Egyptian text in which the phys physicians stated that their patients had too great emptying of the urine, which is consistent with our current understanding of hyperglycemia, which is a symptom of diabetes, which includes frequent urination. Near the same time, in 680 BCE, Indian physicians were noticing that ants were attracted to diabetic urine, which again is consistent with hyperglycemia, as sugar is too available in the body. It, although they understood that this, this disease was connected, they didn't have a treatment or cure for it until Persia in 480 CE, in which Avicen, Avicenna used a combination of Zadori, Trigonella, and beet seeds, which had the combined medicinal effect of decreasing the amount of sugar extracted which decreased the chance of having a type 2 diabetic reaction. This treatment was so effective that even today it is used for most cases of type 2 diabetes and some cases of type 1. So now that we understand diabetes has been around for a long time, we need to understand what it is. Diabetes is a disease caused by an excess of sugar in the blood, known as hyperglycemia or high blood glucose. This causes one of two failures in the body. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas fails altogether, which makes it so there is no insulin being produced in the body. And insulin is the hormone responsible for extracting the sugar from the bloodstream and into the muscles. And in type 2 diabetes, the, the pancreas still creates insulin, although the body has become very resilient to it, and it does not work nearly as well. Both of these scenarios are extremely dangerous and should not be taken lightly. And according to the Center for Disease Control in their National Statistics Report of 2017, in the U.S. alone, more than 30.3 million people are afflicted by diabetes, which is 9.4% of the U.S. population. An additional 84.1% 84.1 million adults exhibit signs of prediabetes which puts them at risk for diabetes within the next four years. And that's 33.3% of the U.S. adult population. So although diabetes is currently less than 10% of our population, we expect it to more than double within the next two years. Although not all is lost, as science and technology advance, so do our ways of treatment. One of the most common forms of treatment is artificial insulin. Used by my father and many diabetics alike, it is the same hormone used in most pancreases, although more powerful, so they can counteract the amount of glucose they eat, based on a bl blood glucose monitor. Recently, they have introduced a constant blood glucose monitor, such as the one my father is sharing information with right now. 
if his blood sugar drops too low or raises too high, I can respond accordingly and get him help. Similarly, canine units can be trained as service dogs to detect the minute physiological changes exhibited by a diabetic during a reaction, and they can also get help. Although these are very effective and there are many more treatments for diabetics, all of them would be rendered useless without the training and information of the diabetic and those around them. My father, for example, has been trained to diet in order to keep his glucose levels steady. And my mother and I have been trained to help him in any case of diabetic reaction. So to wrap a long story short, diabetes is a long story. And it's looking like it's going to be a lot longer. But it is my hope that together we can see an end of it with a cure. Thank you.